Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X3. In the last episode, we beat the game. We beat both of Sigma's forms, and we contained the Sigma virus, at least for now. There's obviously going to be an X4, and it shows up on PlayStation 1, but I digress. There are still some things in the game that I have yet to show off, and as a result, I'm going to do just that. And the earliest point where I actually get to do something different is to fight with Bit. Assuming I haven't fought Vile first, which I haven't. I'll, I'll do it after this. We all know that Bit's weakness is the Frost Shield. However, if you hit him with something other than the Frost Shield on the last hit, instead of dying and exploding a zillion times, he's just going to say that he's going to return, and then he'll just fade away. He'll just, trans he'll just teleport out of the room. So I'm going to go do ahead and show off the battle again, because I can. And do it with the Mega Bastard this time. Once again you have these rings. Want to be careful with these rings. They will hit you if they run into you. Well they won't really hit you, they'll just hold you in place. You also got these fireballs at home in on your current position. And I do not like these rings at all because they keep you from shooting. But I'm actually doing really well here. And that was pretty quick. When you beat him with something other than the Frost Shield on the last shot, he actually does say something different and he actually tells you, I will return. And he just teleports out of there. Well, that's pretty much it for the fight against Bit. Next time, I'm going to do the Vile battle. And by next time, I mean next scene. So, yeah, be right back. Welcome back. We got Bit to flee. Now it's time to do the same with Vile. We've seen all this before, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip it. Same strategy as before. Just sail over him with the air dash. Hit him with that single x buster shot in the back. And then just get him to come after you again so you can just keep doing this over and over and over. This first form is obviously going to be the easy part. It's the second part where we have to let him flee. Alright. Wanted to get him recentered there. Missed there, but I'd probably hit him with the rest of my attacks. And we have four more hits to go. There we go. Alright. Gonna use the Ray Splasher to actually get some, get some more damage on him in less time. I need to jump over that and not duck under it. I should probably use a... sub tank at this point remember you don't want to use the ray splasher on the final shot and I don't even know what I'm doing now because it's been a little while since I fought him okay got him and he just flees. He doesn't even say anything. Well, I'm going to see you 
when we fight Bite. So, be right back. Welcome back. This time around, we're going to face Bite, and since he showed up on command for me this time around, seemingly, I get to show off a little better how to fight this guy. Well, yeah, let's skip all this. Equip Tornado Fan because that's his weakness. If you kill him with it, he dies. Now, what he's throwing at the wall is a mine, a little magnet mine. When it hits the wall, it actually repels you away from the wall and towards Bit, which can actually throw you off if you're not careful. That's when you want to use your air dash in combination with the wall jump. Because if he runs into you, he's going to do a lot of damage to you. He'll punch you into the ceiling and just knock you everywhere. Thankfully, that's all he does. And in exactly one minute, we took this guy down. He is that easy when you know exactly what to do. Just how, just use your air dash in conjunction with the wall jump. When as soon as the magnet mine just hits the wall, and you can time, just time it right, and you can just air dash over him and just run rings around him. Anyway, if you finish him off with something other than the tornado fang, he tells you that he will come back. And even uses two text boxes worth of dialogue to do that. Then again, he did that when he died too, but whatever. Anyway, I have now shown off what happens when you don't use the weakness on all three of these guys, Bit, Bite, and Vile. So now it's time to show off some other stuff. Welcome back. You're probably wondering what happens when Zero dies. Once again, I'm going to show off how to switch between X and Zero to do that. Just pause the game, press R, and then press Start. You can do the same if you want to switch back to X while playing as Zero. You can only use him for one third of a stage. He only has one life. He can't use any special weapons or anything. He basically controls just like he did that one time at the beginning when X got captured and you had to play as him. So nothing unusual there. As he has one life, once you basically kill him, oh and you can't collect weapon capsules either. Anyway, once you basically kill Zero, you won't be able to use him again. And the death is saved into your password. So you want to be careful if you're going to use Zero. When Zero dies, he turns white, the whole screen flashes white, and then you basically head back to Maverick Hunter HQ, where you meet a wounded Zero who tells you that he won't be able to do anything for you from this point on. Once again, once you kill him off, you won't be able to get him back ever, and it is saved into your password. So once again, just be careful. After that little message, you'll head back to wherever it is that you were. So, that's basically what happens. There is another thing that you can do with Zero, and it's actually very, very interesting. And I'm going to be doing that, showing that off when I get to the area where I need to be in order to do this specific action. So, be right back. Welcome back. Since I'm recording this in separate parts, I just realized before I could do a certain thing with Zero, I have to fight a different boss in the first section of Dr. Doppler's laboratory. So without further ado, here's the first boss in our little alternate timeline, which is Bit and Bite again. This time around, you have to fight them together because, well, we didn't kill them in the alternate timeline. Here's the kicker, though. They actually combine and make this little 
Cerberus like thing with an Anubis head. I've got the Ray Splasher, which is automatically equipped. That is the weakness. For this beam sword, you just want to dash under the beam that it shoots out. This thing will vertically track you. If you're climbing up the walls. This thing does have another attack. Where it actually shoots its arms at you. You're basically supposed to get over the first arm. And then just keep aiming at the head. Don't worry about the second arm. It won't home in on you. If you do get grabbed, just power up the Ray Splasher all the way to maximum and then just let it loose. You'll get two free hits on it. And that's basically it for the first section in the alternate timeline. So I'll join you in the second section. Be right back. Welcome back. Since we did not kill Vile in this alternate timeline, this part of Dr. Doppler's lab, the second section, will be a little different. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Hawk here instead of Frog. You'll see why as soon as we make our way down. There's no water here. Which means we'll actually have to take out all these red robots here in order to actually do something. At least getting up the wall here is a little easier. You don't have to deal with those underwater enemies from Toxic Seahorse's stage. And now to do what I've always wanted to do. Switch to zero. And get in this room. It's not here. You know what? Thankfully, it showed up in the other timeline. So, I'll meet you back in the original timeline. Welcome back to the original timeline. In the original timeline, we had to deal with two enemies in the second section of Dr. Doppler's lab. There was the pink robot, similar to the green one at the beginning of Toxic Seahorse's stage, that had that explosion when you shot at it enough that made you assume it was dead when it wasn't, and you had to shoot a little more to finish it off. The wall climbing robot was the green one with the spikes that just shot the electric ball that just split into two and traveled across whatever surface it landed on. In the alternate timeline, because we didn't kill Bitbot and Vile, or something of that nature, we got the much simpler enemies. Instead of the pink robots, we got the red ball and chain robots from Neon Tiger stage, and the wall climbing robot was the blue crab that was able to charge its shot that we saw on Volt Catfish's stage. Without further ado, I'm going to fight the mosquito boss that was in here in the original timeline because it didn't show up in the alternate. And because I got on the ground, I was able to destroy it with the Z-Saber in one blow, which is really all you need. I just shot at it just to ensure that I could actually keep it down. I just had to make sure it moved exactly like I wanted. And when you defeat this thing as zero, it latches onto him. He's down the one unit of energy. Mega Man X shows up. And you basically get the same dialogue from when Zero dies, assuming you let him do so. Except he says that he has to make it back to Dr. King's lab. Tells him to be careful. And then gives him the beam saber. And then it goes back to the death dialogue as usual. Alright, so now that you have the Beam Saber from Zero, instead of having a red charge for your maximum charge, you have a green one. 
The first two shots work just like the red one, but you have a third attack. This is the beam saber, and it actually lets you shoot a projectile unlike Zero, which is very, very nice. And I'm going to stop it right here, so until then, join me next time where I show off even more stuff involving the beam saber, and I get to show off the ending without Zero. So, until then, this is Prince Watercrest, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!